Alrighty now, welcome, unprofessionals. This is the first real episode of Unprofessional Development. This is the little part where we talk before we play the episode. So, this episode is more why we are teachers, not really about why we're doing the podcast, um, but the reason we're doing the podcast is because we think there's funny stories out there that teachers have, and we think you can learn from them. Okay, so I want to thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving us five-star ratings. And thank you, thank you so much for sharing this with your friends, with your neighbors, on your social media. Just random people you're looking at in the grocery store and go, Hey, do you listen to podcasts? You should try on professional development. Anyway. Some episodes is just me and Tedisco rambling and cracking each other up, and some like some episodes like next week we will have guests. The theme song is still a work in progress, but we hope you find it catchy. Please enjoy this episode. <laughs> It's okay to be unprofessional. This is your teacher confessional. These are real stories. The teachers are real. You're going to laugh with Tedisco and Meal. Are we just going by Tedisco and Mealy, or do we call you like Disco Duck and Mean Meals on Wheels, or do we come up with funny nicknames or, or what what do you did you have any thoughts on that uh, I, i'm fine just going by tedisco tedisco okay. is a fun enough name okay okay like, cool i don't it doesn't cool. need a lot of assistance how about you Mealy? Uh, Mealy works for me in fact at one point because like so many people just know me as Mealy, and lots of people who around school know who i am but don't know that what my first name is i actually discussed with my wife legally changed my name to just Mealy. Just a mononym? Yes, I'm like just Mealy. I'm Bono like, like or Prince. Madonna. Exactly. That's, honestly, that's how we refer you know? to most teachers. Like, yes, yes. I, I, was I guess just... I could be confused with Miley at that point, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was working with a teacher. I worked with her for three years. Right. And at one point when my admin came over to me and said, oh yeah, just go talk to Nicole. And I went, who the hell is Nicole? Well, when people introduce themselves to me, like it's a new teacher or new to me, and they go, I go Hello, what's your name? And they go, my name's Ralph. I'm like... I don't want to know that. No, that doesn't I, help me. I want to know what your last name is, right. so that when like the kids tell me how much you suck, then <laughs> I know who they're talking about. <laughs> because that's what it is. Like the kids will come up to you and say, "Like I need to go talk to Mr. Brown." I'm like, I don't know who that is. Right. If I just know you as Roger. So anyway, so we'll be Mealy and Tedisco. Hopefully, as you listen, you can figure out which one's which. I don't know how similar our voices sound to whomever is. I think my voice listening. is far more grating, so it should be okay. Easy to pick okay. All right. So I think mine's is kind of nasally. So. <laughs> So here's my first question, Amelia. Sure. Why are we here? So we're here. We wanted to make a podcast. Um, in case you, you probably clicked on something that said unprofessional development, te- real teachers telling real stories, which is a, a mouthful of a name, but I think <laughs> it will like get people sucked in because most people I assume who are going to listen to this are going to be teachers. Though if we get really big, then we'll just you know we'll be as big as This American Life, but we'll, and, and then we won't be teachers anymore. So no, that, that problem will take care of itself. So, but we feel like that there's stories to be told, and we feel that in general, we know that professional development goes from horrible to medium. And so, <laughs> this is something hopefully that will be both entertaining, and maybe you can find something that this is something. Oh, I can use that in my classroom, or I can use that when I do this lesson. That I hadn't thought about that way to do that. So we want to be funny, we want to laugh, but we also hopefully at the end of the day, maybe there's some kind of takeaway that you get. But I think the entertaining is trumps usefulness. What do you, what do you think? I, yeah, no, I fully agree. And I also think it's just, it's a good insight into people outside the teaching profession, too. Because, like, whenever I mention I'm a teacher, and I'm talking to a group of people who just aren't associated with teachers, they're fascinated. Yes. Like, it's a, it's an interesting job, you know, because you just, you deal with chaos. That's all it is. Right. As I explained to someone the other day, being personally responsible for what 30 teenagers are doing all at the same time is like it's it's a it's a mind challenging thing because you're trying to like focus possibly on one person that's asking you a specific question while others are working independently but you also have to make sure you don't see that kid stick a pencil through the other kid's eye or ear or all of a sudden you know some kid goes to the bathroom i don't know if you when i first started keeping track of who's asked to go to the bathroom and whether or not they've come back 
<laughs> I remember an administrator calling me on that my first year. He's okay. like, so, and he was doing an observation. Oh, no. And he's like, did you realize that, like, three kids were out of the bathroom at once? I'm like, I had no idea. I knew that I was being observed, and I was nervous about, like, someone judging me on how good I was teaching. And so when some kids say, can I go to the bathroom, I just said yes. Well, because your first year teaching is such chaos anyway. And being able to keep track of all those things. So oh, yeah. Now I've got that figured out. My pass hangs on the door, and if someone says, can I go to the bathroom, and I look at the door, and I don't see the pass, mm -hmm. I go no. And if I see the pass, then I say yes. And it's that, it's that simple. Right. So, so for anybody who ever went to school and wondered, why does a teacher need us to use a pass, it's because we're idiots. Also because one out of 50 kids will, like, just wander the halls randomly, and so now there has to be some kind of accountability tool to go, why are you out in the hall? And then so they're pretty sure there's still a percentage higher than that. It could be. Yeah. It could be. Did you ever have a kid? It didn't happen to me that he had stolen my pass. Oh, but, no. But have you known of kids that have stolen passes? No, not off the top of my head. I always make weird passes. Yeah. And, like, that's why teachers do that, too. I have know one teacher friend who literally made a giant, like, man-sized pencil. Nice. And that's their bathroom nice. pass. So, like, I would make, like, ties as my bathroom passes, because then it's just something you put on and hopefully not get urine on. Yeah. No, I don't think I've ever seen that. I didn't. Oh, when well, I, was I had a kid that came to my class, like, 30 minutes late. I'm like, where were you? He was like, I was with Mr. Um, so-and-so, the administrator. And I'm like, I happen to have them on my phone. I said, Did, were you with so-and-so? And he's like, I saw him for about five minutes. He said he had a pass. I said, I, I assumed it was from you. It was, that year they had issued us... You know, like 8 by 11, it was, had your room number on it and a name on it, it was laminated. Mm -hmm. Well, he decided one of his teachers, he would just take that pass, <laughs> fold it up, keep it in his back pocket. And, and then keep that, it forever? Keep it forever. Anytime he wanted around, wander, he could wander around school uh, and just wave it at whoever was giving him a hard time. I mean, and that's just, pretty smart. Yeah. Well, we caught him, and I took the pass. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about why we became a teacher. So you can go first. Tell us, like, oh, why man. you became a teacher as opposed to, you know... A lumberjack. Oh, you know, the uh, the money, uh -huh. the fame, the yes. parties. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I became a teacher because, uh, number one, my, my personality can't fit with anything else. Mm -hmm. I, there's, I'm a very inconsistent person. I don't mean that as like an irresponsible thing. I mean, if you give me a task to do and tell me to do it five times, I'm going to do it different every single time. Like, okay. that's just the kind of person I am. And so I can't have a job where I'm just repeating the same things, mm -hmm. like just constantly putting in spreadsheets or constantly answering phones. I go nuts. Okay. So I needed something that was just weird and different, and, and teaching is about as far as it gets. So how different is your when you teach the same lesson to three to three blocks? Do you have do you have you have one prep or multiple preps? Uh, I have, I have two preps. Yeah, I teach okay. two different classes. Right okay. Now. When you teach the same thing twice in one day, how much do you, does that end up being different? Oh, it's very different almost right. every time. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll keep like certain shades of it. It's like when a band covers a song. Like okay. you, you get the same chorus, but the rest of it changes. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. I, I just I can't keep it consistent. And then, and then like I'll, I'll see the kids and see the reactions and and start to, to adjust things as I'm going along too, which you know would make it makes me a better teacher and makes me worse at everything else. Right. Because right. if I need to tell the same thing to three different people and they all get a different story. That's that's just bad. That's how you ruin birthday party plans. As a person, we all have our stories that we tell, like maybe from childhood or something that happened recently, like some incident happened at the grocery store while you're on vacation, mm -hmm. and you end up telling it to like seven or eight different friends. Right. Do you personally try and vary it each time you tell it when you do that, or do you end up like hitting the same beats when you do that so it grows and evolves yeah i listen for the big laughs and then okay. i just repeat those over and over again but it's, it's for, in my mind it's almost like working out a set for uh -huh. stand-up okay uh, not that i've ever done stand-up but you know it, it's that same sort of process of you know i'm gonna start here and then uh, i'm just gonna see what happens okay i'll embellish certain things as well. which related to that part of the reason i became a teacher or one of the wasn't like a reason i became a teacher but it was like a huge thing that i realized that really made it good for me is having a captive audience that if i want to just Tell a story that I want to tell. Oh, guess what? You guys are going to sit here and, and <laughs> hear what my kid did on the weekend or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I try to keep it like under three minutes, but I'm like, hey, let me, you guys, let me tell you what happened when I was in blah, blah, blah. You oh know? And, I, and I, I, you know, I'm known, I think, for um, telling stories in my classroom. But, and I'm very tangential and not to like try and 
a little ADD, but I do, I don't think I'm full-blown ADD, but I do like very easily, something reminds me of something, and so I will like pause in the middle of something, and, and just a word will set me off, and I'm like, let me tell you about like this that happened to me here, and but then I'll try it back to that word that's relevant to um, what we're teaching. Oh, FYI, we haven't we mentioned this, but Tedisco teaches English and I teach math. So. Oh, yes. Very different subjects. All right. right. So I'm, I'm curious. Like, I know why what drew me to English. Like, I love I love poetry. I love reading. I love exploring those themes with students and mm-hmm. getting them to think more about their lives and write about their lives. Mm-hmm. So what drew you to math? Like, that's, that's an interesting topic to feel passionate right. about. Honestly, a big part of it is natural ability. Like, I was always good at math. I just see how numbers work. I was able, always able to do well at math. It always just came naturally to me. And I liked it. I enjoyed, like, the puzzly aspect of it and trying to figure out how things work. So it was more like, it was more like that. And also, I guess kind of related, kind of how I became a teacher. I went to college the first time, and I was not mature enough for college, and I flunked <laughs> out. I don't know if I've shared that with you. What? Not. Yes. I was, no. I was, act- you get a letter, and they... This just, this just in, if you've never gotten this letter, because there's always, there's always political correctness, even back in 1989, okay? It said, you know, good William, William Thomas Mealy, you have been academically dismissed from Indiana University of Pennsylvania, a oh. school in western Pennsylvania. So I was academically wow. dismissed, because basically I just didn't go to class. That's a good reason. I would stay up late at guess. night, not always like, you know, they're, oh, did you party? I'm like, did I go to parties? Yes. But sometimes it was just, I was just watching TV, and I didn't <laughs> feel like going to class. And then... <laughs> After you haven't been to class like five times, <laughs> it's very humiliating to go back because yes. you're going to have to see this professor and, gonna, and you're going to have no real good explanation for no. why you've not been there for two or three weeks. No. So you just don't go. And then now it's been four weeks and now it's even harder to go back and it snowballs and, and then, then you get a letter that says you're academically dismissed. Oh so goodness. years later... I had a neighbor. Your students must love that story. Yeah, I, I don't tell. I, I didn't feel comfortable telling it when I first started teaching, but I'm, I'm, this is my ninth year. I feel a little bit better about teaching it because it, it is relevant, and I think for kids that are struggling, yeah. it's okay to fail. It's okay to mess up, and there's and there's second and third and fourth chances for everybody. So right. so feel Hear free. that kids fail out of college. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so what did you do then? So, then, so, then I, so I did lots of different things. I had a lot of dead-end jobs. I was a telemarketer. I worked in... This is that dead-end? Well, there's not a lot of money being made in, in telemarketing. You know? Oh, okay. I also, like, years ago, for those of you that are, that are older, and maybe there's still people doing this, I don't know, a survey taker in the malls for market research. Oh. So I held a clipboard and would just, like, I, I called it asking stupid people stupid questions, so I would, like... Those are two brutal jobs. What do you think about these socks? So then eventually, <laughs> you know... And they're like four different kinds of socks. Well, these are slightly softer. I don't know. You know? Okay, cool. Here's five dollars. Appreciate you helping us out. So then eventually I became a bug man. We at some point we might get into that. And then I was in heating and air for uh, ten years, making duck work, stuff like that. So the, the bug man, I've killed literally millions of roaches. I've been in every unit of public housing in Charlotte, North Carolina, and quite a few other cities: Charleston, Kinston, weird North brag. Carolina. So, yes. But killing bugs is a lot of fun. It's really, really cool. I, this is obviously not a visual thing, but there's a really nice thing where you have this little skinny straw and it sticks up behind a cabinet and literally you can make it like rain roaches down onto the counter that, the roaches, roaches that you wouldn't see. So I've seen like roach waterfalls before where they were I'm just gonna pouring need off to the take cabinets. a quick break so I can go vomit forever. <laughs> anyway, so I had a neighbor that was, um, sh- she had, was going back to school. Okay. I don't know what her whole story was, but she was going back to school. And um, so she was at the local community college, and she had some homework to do. And we were we were friendly, and so she came over and said, "I've got this this homework, and what can I um, can you help me with it?" And I looked at it, and I just kind of there were some examples on the, in the textbook or whatever, and I started explaining it to her, and she got it. And I call this, um, and I do share this with my kids, and it's probably not the best thing to share. So um, <laughs> that aha moment when kids get that aha moment and that light bulb goes on, I call that teacher crack. <laughs> but, like, seriously, that's the greatest feeling in the world. It is. It? And like, it lasts about two minutes, and you need another hit. The greatest sound on the planet is just hearing a bunch of kids go, oh, oh I get it. Like, oh, that's... Oh. That's what it is. That's why we do it. Like, yeah. that, that, and, and... But, but like I said, how long does that feeling last? I, not long. Right, <laughs> so you've got to get another one, right? So that's... I call that teacher crack. But anyway... So, but she got it, and and then these words, and they they still like, and it's been like, fifteen, twenty years since since this happened, it's more than that, I guess. So she said to me, 
you explain that better than my teacher. <laughs> and I, and then so the you know inside me I'm like, maybe I should become a teacher, you mm-hmm. know. And now true story, my dad taught for 38 years. My mom was an elementary school teacher for a couple of years before she got married because back then you just like had babies and were a housewife. <laughs> My cousin is a teacher. My brother is kind of a teacher. He teaches phys ed. I don't know if that counts or not. That counts. <laughs> and my um, my grandmother, uh, my mom's side, was a teacher. And I have a cousin who is a teacher. And she actually married someone who was a teacher as well. So that's so strange. To there's me. lots of teachers in my in my blood. There's no teachers in my family. Uh, my sister was a teacher for a little bit, and then decided she wanted um, what's it called? Money. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, forgot <laughs> what the word was. Um, I'm just so distant from it. Everybody else in my family, most of them are medical. But that's interesting. Yes. And then, and this is not a uh, Christian podcast, but I got born again. I went to see... Interesting. I went to a conference. There was a um, huge mega pastor, mega church pastor named Bishop T.D. Jakes. You may or may not have heard of him. He's in Texas. He's got a giant church. Deion Sanders goes to his church and uh, Emmett Smith and a lot of Cowboys because he's in Dallas and other famous are sports people. Ball people. They are sports ball people. Cool. And anyway, so he had this conference and there's like, so there was this guy who was a motivational speaker who was at the conference. His name is Les Brown, not the, not the, and his band of renown. This is a motivational speaker who at one point was married to Gladys Knight of Gladys Knight and the Pips. Yeah. And um, he told his story of when he was labeled educable, educable mentally retarded. He had a teacher who really inspired him, and he ends up now he's like a motivational speaker. Like he charges like Coca Cola. This is years ago when he was seven. He's like he charged like Coca Cola like a hundred k just to like speak to like them for like one hour. Must be nice. And he talked but about that's awesome. He talked about finding what it is that you really should be doing that you're not actually doing, and kind of gave us like some tips and tools and stuff that like that were actionable. And so I walked out of that conference saying I'm going to go back to school and I'm going to become a math teacher. Now, it literally took me about 10 more years to do it because I nickel and dime my way and I got married along the way and had kids along the way. And then like online education finally was just starting to come into being. And I finally I did I do some research to find a school where I could do it so I could go at school online were, at night. Were you still doing the pet stuff while you were? At that point, I was in heating. At the, I was, oh, you were doing the HVAC? I was doing the HVAC stuff. Yeah. Yes. And not telling them because if you told them that you were studying something outside of HVAC, there was a decent chance that they would like say... Well, he's not going to be here that long, so we'll fire you. So I could never tell anyone that I was working with. Oh wow! You know, like who I was like friends with. You know what I mean? You, you worked still for like five years. Life of being right. <laughs> HVAC right. by day, math teacher by <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of you know. So then I, I finished my degree and 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 all that. Actually, the um, this is barely interesting, but the <laughs> but the recession helped me. This is interesting oh, okay. because due to the recession, yeah, I was able to I got laid off. So, yay! But the cool thing was, Congress kept on extending unemployment. I was about to say, yeah, then you get unemployment. So I got unemployment. So I, like, we, you know, my wife took, she had been working part-time because we were raising kids, so she went back to work full-time to kind of be, like, the good wife and help me um, do this. So I was, so they kept on extending unemployment because when I was going back to school at night, I'm like, how am I going to pay a mortgage, have a kid, and do student teaching, which is basically... Four months of um, you you can't do anything else but but student teach when you're student teaching. Oh yeah, no. So was like I was able to 10, like twelve hour days for me. Right, I was able to collect unemployment while I was student teaching and and complete that's my degree. Awesome. So that's so then I ended up you know then getting a job um teaching. The recession didn't help me. <laughs> I, I graduated. Oh geez, geez, what year did I graduate? I graduated in the year it was two thousand two thousand ten. I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was 2010 that I graduated college. Because then I just, but that was like right in the recession. And I, I, so I'm from New York. Up in New York, they kept like closing and consolidating schools. Yes. And so no teaching jobs. Uh, Definitely I, not for inexperienced English teachers. Right. Of yeah. which there's like. A lot of people seem to know English in America. Right. Not a whole lot of demand. Yeah. So I was even, I, I even like knew a couple principals at like big districts. And they're mm-hmm. like, we can get you sub work. None. And that was it. Wow. Um, so is that what brought you down to North Kakalaki? Yeah. Call it, we call it North Kakalaki down here. I call it Crackalaka. Do you? North Crackalaka. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had a friend. And I'll tell a North Kakalaki story after you get done yours, okay? All right. I had a friend who, um, yeah, her parents, like, had a, a home down here, and so she'd come on vacation when, uh, when she was young. And she was also a teacher, so she wound up coming down here to teach, and we went to college together, so she said, well, why don't you come on down? You can, you know, save me, and it was her and her husband, and... 
He's like, yeah, you can crash on our couch till you find a place and uh, if you find a job. And I, I had two interviews here. I was uh, absolutely laughed out of the first one. Nice. Uh, it was bad. Um, and then the second one, I, I actually knew what to do, and uh, I got hired on the spot. Yeah. By the way, this just in. Interviewing, good interviewer, good teacher. There's a teeny tiny correlation there. Oh, my goodness. Because you can come in, you can speak jargon and say all these things, and then you are just a hot mess of garbage in the classroom. Right. But you might be, like, not the most professional, polished person when you are in the interview, but in the classroom, you have that connection with those kids, you have that passion about your subject, and you, like, kids are learning in your classroom. Good point, because there's a big difference. In an interview, it's about being able to talk to professional adults. The totally opposite skill is being able to talk to a bunch of kids. So, you, like, what you do in the interview is not at all what you do. All right. So, so the North Kakalaki story? North, Kath- North Kakalaki. So move down. got to take a break. So move down here. Heard North Kakalaki. Thought that was hysterical. Cause, and South Kakalaki. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's what we call it down here. I go up north, and I have a um, cousin. She's got a, a young son. And so I'm talking to him, you know, and he's, he's like, uh, he's like, oh, where do you, where do you live, you know? Um, cousin, I was, I'm cousin Billy to him, okay? You know, cousin Billy, I was, oh, I, I live in, I live in um, North Kakalaki. So elementary school teachers, you know this. Do you know about the, do you know about the Flat Stanley project that they give elementary yeah, school teachers? Yeah, I know Flat Stanley. Flat Stanley. So Flat Stanley is a book, and Flat Stanley has like these adventures. Right. So very often. Flat Stanley is given to people to, um, you, you give it to a relative that lives far away and they take Flat Stanley and take pictures or bring like them that. around the world. Right. And then send it back and, to you yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So this kid, his name's Andrew. He's, he's, he's a grown up now. The teacher says, so where's your farthest relative live? Andrew being second grader uh. says North Kakalaki. <laughs> the teacher has no idea no. what that is. Because they're uh, in Pennsylvania, and they've never heard of North Kakalaki. It's an impressive and then, level of teacher, and, then and you can embarrass mom, a student the from hundreds gets, of miles away. The mom gets, my cousin gets an email or phone call from the parent, from the, from the teacher saying, uh, Andrew says his furthest relative lives in North Kakalaki. Can you help me out with this? Why? So it's always good to tell kids, like, <laughs> wrong things, okay? Yes, I give them wrong information all the time. Yes, I, I love it. I, I say, kids, please go get a calcumulator. And then the kid says to me, Mr. Mila, isn't it calculator? I go, oh, that is what ignorant people, people say. So <laughs> please say calculator in here. We are educated. I, I did once convince an entire classroom, and this was mean, uh, that naive isn't in the dictionary because it's French. Nice. And one day they're going to get that joke. Nice. Uh, 30 people are just going to go, oh, shoot. And I, I just, I hope they just hate me for it. I think that's the goal. Oh, okay. All right. So I think we need to take a quick break. Okay. Uh, and we will we will come back okay. for, for the rest. Okay, when we stopped recording, we thought we were going to take a break and had more stuff to get to, and we decided that what we gotten was enough of an episode. So that is the end of episode one. Thanks again for listening. Thanks again for downloading. Thanks again for subscribing so you can hear all of our funny episodes and thank you again for giving us five star ratings and thank you for sharing with everybody you meet hey if you want to contact us we're old school we don't have the social media yet so just email us at unprofessionaldevelopmentcast at gmail.com i'm going to put that in the show notes and tell us what you want or what you like or if you know a teacher with funny stories that could be a guest like our guest next week that we're going to give you just a teeny tiny taste of. Thank you, and stay unprofessional. But today, in that lesson, uh-huh. things were going like gangbusters. I mean, the, the, the bubbles were coming out of the tube. I was like, what the heck is happening? <laughs> like, it, never, it never happens like this. And so I'm, I'm really confused because, of course, the data they're getting, they can't. They're That's like, the everything's truck. the same. Everything's the same, right? And I'm like, oh, this is terrible. So then, like, they're still like, not... Uh, Versus science, my our hands are starting to burn. They're starting to burn. And I'm like, what is going on?